Dynamic Arrays is this fantastic feature within Google Sheets that allows you to return an entire table from a formula rather than a single value. So an example is, for example, here, the unique function that returns the unique set of the place values regardless of how many are in there. So if this changes to, for example, Glasgow, then that will appear here. You have all sorts of dynamic array functions that we'll go through in this video. My name is David Benayim and I have lots of videos on Excel, Google Sheets, Power BI, PowerPoint, Zoom, Teams, all sorts of Office applications. So feel free to subscribe to my channel if you want more information. So let's look at first how to make this one. So I can write equals unique. And then I just have the range. So I'm going to say, for example, the products column, close the brackets, and I have the values there. This can be really useful when you're looking for data validation lists or just when you try and identify, well, what are the unique values when you have a very long list of details? You can go even further by using another dynamic array, which is sort. So sort, as it says, will sort a row of range by a specified column. And then unique will allow you to do that further here. So here it is sorting it alphabetical as well. Our transpose, such a simple tool that is very, very cool to do in dynamic arrays. So you could write equals transpose. And I can just say, for example, these things. And as you can see, it just switches rows to columns, columns to rows. So here are my headers and here is the rest of the data. Really, really useful one there. <laughs> Another really cool dynamic array function is the ability to split this using these characters here. So into three columns. We could do this with text to columns, but I want to do this with a function. So here I can write equals split. And then I just use the first two inputs, which is this text, comma, and then delimiter. Delimiter, I can write that greater than and the dash. It takes multiple ones. Make sure you put speech marks around it. And then we'll split it down like that. Now, I had to drag it down there, but let's say in a situation I didn't want to drag it down. With this function array formula, you can turn regular formulas into something that spans a whole array. So I can write equals array formula, and then I can say this column multiplied by this column, press enter, and then it comes down like that. Uh, this can be taken even further. So you can do, for example, this variation where I get a summary of who are the names of people who have product beer, who are the names who have tea, etc. And this is done with the sort unique function first. And then here it's done with array formula and wrap it around a text join. Uh, I have a tutorial on how to do this with Excel. Only the Google Sheets equivalent needs this array formula wrapped around it. So I'll link to that video in the description below. I really love the ability to stack tables on top of each other. So here, for example, I can say equals and then you use the special notation like this. And then you use a semicolon and use the second one. Don't include the headers in the second one. Press enter and you get it showing like that. Now, the only limitation with this is that it doesn't grow because I started and ended where the tables are. Whereas this other version allows you to be more flexible where you can have a much larger range, but you nest it inside the filter function and you say, well, include only the ones that are not equal to blank so that it doesn't show up like that. I'll cover the filter function in more detail later on. Let's say that I want this to flow through to another spreadsheet. Let me take this and copy it and go over here. And I'm going to write equals import range. Spreadsheet URL, wrap that in speech marks. And then the sheet was called link put an exclamation point around it and then say A1 to C5. Speech marks around the second input, enter. And then it tells me I need to allow access. But once I click there, it will show me the data. You can also have an array function which returns historic stock prices or exchange rates like this. 
So I'll write it for you. You write equals Google Finance, and then the ticker, I've written it here already, comma, attributes, I'm going to write all here, and then start dates, always with speech marks, first of the first, say 2020, and then end date, I'm going to write today, open close brackets, and then close my brackets, the interval will be daily, and then when it loads, it gives you that. Look at that, open, high, low, close volume. This one started in 2010, so it's populated almost 4,000 rows of data. I'll link to another video where I talk more about this function. I like to combine Google Finance with another one called Sparkline, but let me first show you what it does. So you can just select that data. It does a kind of nice little line chart there. There is a second input, but that is for more advanced uses. But you can also embed this inside it. So here is the formula. So if I copy that and I say equals sparkline and then paste, it will put in the entire trend inside this sparkline, kind of like that. You can take sort even further by saying, for example, equals sort. And let's say the range is these three columns. And I'm going to sort them first by the place column. And that is going to be ascending. So I'm going to write true there. And then by the unix column. And I'm going to write false to be descending rather than ascending. So now we can see here it is showing us first by the place and then going down in values from top to bottom like that. The arrays are all good, except that if you have some text in the cell underneath here, it will give you this ref error. And it says array results was not able to expand because it would overwrite the data here. Once you delete that, it goes away. However, what if you say, well, you just wanna make sure that you always have that free. So there's a couple of ways to do that. I'm going to write equals array constraint. And then I'm going to say, well, for example, this one, but restrict that by five rows and three columns. Not that useful. I've just basically taken the first few entries there, but that's where sort n comes in. And I really like sort n. Sort n is a great function with two main use cases. The top five entries say, for example, for these three columns. And the other one is you could say, well, just give me a sum of the top three cells, the bottom three cells. So let's look at both of those. So you could say equals sort n. And the important thing with these sort of long functions is to follow this. So the range is going to be all of this. Whatever you're editing is in green. So n, this is going to be five because I'm going to say give me the top five. Display ties mode, I'm going to leave that blank. And anything that is square brackets, you can leave blank. So here I'm going to just put another comma to move it to the next input. So column is going to be the units column. And then is ascending, I'm going to write false, which is, is not ascending, which is going to give them to me from top to bottom. So there's my top five entries sorted with all of these values. The other use case I said was that I want to just get the total value of the top five sales. So let me do this step by step. I can say sort n and I can only this one doesn't have square brackets, so that's the only one that I need. But if I do nothing, then it just gives me the top value, which is not that useful. But if I do that and then three, close my brackets, I get the bottom three. Not that useful. Um, in some cases, you often want the top three. So you select this, comma, press three, comma, and then you have to go to sort column and use this again. I wish the default was top instead of bottom, but unfortunately it is bottom. So you have to say false like that. And then you get the top three columns. To sum these up, all you have to do is put a sum around it. So wrap it inside a sum function, and then you get the total value of your top or your bottom values for sales there. As the name implies, these are dynamic, which means that if I get a higher entry, like for example, this becomes 9,000, then 9,000 does contribute here, and it does change the order here. 
Filter allows you to specify which columns you want returned and then a filter criteria. So a filter is something like this, where I can filter the place, for example, to be London, and then it will return these three rows, but I want that in a function that is dynamic. So I can write here, for example, equals filter, and then I can select these three columns, and then I can say the condition, that's green, where this, type equals, and then any text in Excel you need to put in speech marks. So wrap it around speech marks, press enter, and then you get those three amounts. This is dynamic, so if this is not London, even if it's misspelt, that goes away. And if this one becomes London, that gets added on there. So that is the filter function. But there are two main limitations with the filter function. The first one is that I had to manually type these titles because actually the formula just gives me the results. And the second one is you need to get the same columns in the same order. So I can't say, for example, I want first the units column, then I want the products column, and I don't care about the others, even the one that has the place column. So for that, you need another function called query. Query is probably Google Sheets most sophisticated and flexible function. In this video, I'm just going to cover a simple use case. There will be another video where I cover going into more detail. So equals query, you have three inputs, data, comma, query, comma, headers. So data, this is just the range, similar to our usual dynamic array stuff. And then query, here you type in the query that you want. You start and end with speech marks and you write essentially a sentence. So you start with select almost always. And select means that you then say which columns that you want. In this case, I'm going to say select E comma B. And that is going to return first column E, which is units, then column B, which is product. The last input is optional. I'm going to leave it blank as I normally do. And that returns a couple of things better than the filter function. The first one is that it does return the column headers. And the second one is you can return things in whichever order that you want. But we had sort and filter. We never got the column headers and we had to stay with the preset order of the columns. And that for me is too limiting. So that's why I love query. So I can say here equals query and my data is going to be this. And I'm going to say speech marks select Let's do it again, E comma B. And then I'm going to give it some filter criteria. And to do that, you use the where clause, where let's say D equals London. But a couple of things to know about London. Firstly, you don't use the double quotations, you use single quotations or an apostrophe. Second thing, this is case sensitive. When you write London, like that with a capital L, it will work. If you write it with a small L, it won't work. Let me show you that. So after that, I close my um, double speech marks and then close my brackets and I get this. Just to prove it, if this is a small L, it doesn't work. It just gives me the headers, which is not what I want. Uh, the rules are that you use these single sort of apostrophes when you want to wrap it around a text value, which is in normal Excel when you would use the double quotations, but you will just always start and end a select statement with double quotations. As I said, there's a lot more to the query function and I'm gonna make another video of it, but here's a sneak peek. You're gonna filter with and or, or even contains or dates and other things like that. You can use order by to sort things. You can use group by or pivot. These are like creating pivot tables in the regular Google Sheets. And you can even format it with a certain way that you would like to see the data. So if you like this video, then feel free to click the like button and subscribe to my channel. If you want more videos on PowerPoint, Excel, Google Sheets, Power BI, Zoom, Teams, etc.